Hello everyone, for this video I would like to emphasize on a new, to a new topic which is related to our course which is seismic tools so this chapter is very important which will introduce you to the equipments and tools that conventionally used in seismic survey so to understand each function for each tool is actually very crucial before operating any survey in geophysics in order to get a clear picture on how it is working and can prevent uh, or avoid uh, certain unwanted uh, incident or mistakes that to be happen for example uh, misinterpretation or wrong processing sequence uh, that will contribute to incorrect uh, geological interpretation on the other hand prevention is better than cure so if you look at this second slide seismic tools uh, generally can be divided into two major uh, components uh, which are the seismic sources and the seismic detectors and what we can see here uh, type of environment also play a major role in uh, classifying uh, these two type of source and detectors as far as the type of uh, environment is concerned um, for instance land and marine uh, equipment both have a distinguished uh, technology application that gives slightly different way of processing sequence so before proceeding um, in uh, detail of each components so let's have a look on this basic principle of seismic survey so in general we generate a signal uh, by giving an impact to the ground to produce elastic wave so both body wave uh, and surface wave simultaneously uh, will be produced and then uh, as the wave travel along the surface body or series of recorder and receiver uh, will be recording um, the time arrival and producing this set of uh, seismograph so this is what you call a seismograph again uh, I already mentioned you in chapter 4 or lecture 4 uh, so depending on how many receivers that you use it will determine the number of uh, seismic trace so this is what you call it as seismic trace so the wiggle things <coughs> so for this case you have uh, 24 geophones hence you are going to have uh, 24 seismic traces in this uh, section and this section is actually called uh, short gather uh, referring to a series of seismic trace that recording a similar or common source so the time arrival will be uh, gradually delayed as the number of geophones increase meaning that the further the position between source and geophones uh, the more delayed uh, in term, uh, time arrival in seismic sh section so plus this what you call it as uh, an offset so move on uh, we go to the first component in seismic tools uh, which is seismic source so the seismic source is the localized region uh, within which uh, the sudden release of energy leads to a rapid stressing of the surrounding medium so in specific um, the seismic sources are devices that generate control uh, seismic energy that used to perform both reflection and refraction uh, seismic survey so depending the type of source uh, it can provide single pass or continuous sweep uh, of energy that generates seismic wave which travel through a medium uh, such as uh, water or layer of rocks so type of source is very essential depending on the purpose of certain investigation so different purpose for example um, uh, investiga investigation in shallow subsurface in engineering normally we use a simple source such as uh, hammer or vibrator but uh, for mining purpose uh, we conventionally use explosive source such as dynamite since the target uh, is always uh, a bit deeper so move on um, uh, the land sources here we have three type of seismic sources which are weight drop uh, explosive and vibratory so weight drop and explosion are commonly used for shallow subsurface subsurface investigation while for the deeper um, uh, coverage we normally use vibrosize or vibratory um, uh, for investigation however vibrosize and weak drop is the most common non-explosive source uh, that always used in on land and you know it gives us a um, hard time when uh, we are trying to use explosive as our source because it requires us to apply for a license or permit for handling or uh, keeping all the explosive material and so on plus the police officer must be there during the acquisition hence um, it's kind of days of uh, procedure uh, compared to the other plus the environmentalists always complaining uh, some more so weight drop land source type is known as uh, impacted source because the energy is generated by giving impact to the surface of the earth 
Two type of weight drop are commonly used. One is 7 kg sledgehammer and another one is 25 kg load drop like this one that is attaching to the uh, four time four pickup. So basically we need to knock uh, this to the metal plate laying uh, on the ground as you can see here because for uh, more efficient coupling of energy transferring uh, to the ground. And here is another type of weight drop that basically require a load with certain amount of weight that used to give impact uh, on the ground. So uh, here we have a weight drop by using uh, a truck here. And uh, most of them are using truck. They tow the, the truck. They make uh, some invention uh, so that uh, this can travel uh, at the small area compared if you're using truck. So land sources explosive. Uh, meanwhile, is uh, dynamite is commonly used uh, source of explosion type that can be considered as ultimate land seismic source due to its high impact. Um, so this source type is the best uh, to use in unconsolidated or weathered areas such as uh, alluvium area. So explosive are commonly detonated in shallow shot holes to improve the coupling of the energy source with the ground and minimize the surface damage for example like here so shotgun here is another type of explosion source uh, other than dynamite but the signal is not as good as dynamite and we used to run a survey in the UTP uh, forest backyard a few years ago uh, by using shotgun and uh, bullet expo explosion that one is for um, seismic reflection uh, the data is not uh, quite convincing but at least we can get something we can get uh, some uh, subsurface information so the graph over here is showing the comparison between the type of sources so explosive weight drop uh, basically with relative energy and frequency so we have 8 gauge shotgun uh, 12 gauge shotgun 25 kg uh, weight drop and 7.3 uh, kg hammers in comparison so as far as the energy is concerned uh, obviously explosive method uh, has the highest impact compared to the weak drop and yes logically we knew that now we come to the last one which is a vibratory type of seismic source known as a vibrosize so um, uh, this used tractor mounted vibrator to pass uh, into ground and extended vibration of low amplitude and continuous varying frequency known as a sweep signal. So technically a large mass uh, is placed contact with the ground surface and vibrated according to the specific, uh, specific pattern. So later during the several seconds uh, duration of signals. Um, generation the signal frequency is continuous varied. So uh, Typical sweep signal lasts for 7 or more seconds and varies in frequency between limit uh, of 10 to uh, 80 Hz. So here the best part in uh, utilizing the vibrator is um, uh, its capability to generate P and S wave because it is controlled by the servo control hydraulic shaker unit uh, that is uh, either can shake in horizontal movement and produce a P wave like here or vertically movement to produce a S wave so tampo truck is um, it's a truck that used to bring the vibratory tools that will carry on the seismic survey so basically this heavy truck will lower uh, to its base uh, plate onto the ground until the wheels lifting up uh, to the weight of the truck uh, is concentrated on the base plate so by doing that, it is actually generate a control vibratory force with low amplitude vibration ranging from uh, 10 to 20 seconds. So that um, if we, uh, what we call it as continuous signal or sweep. So normally the signal varies uh, in frequency between 10 to 100 hertz, which can give us a good seismic bandwidth actually. Uh, here are some illustration of the seismic vibratory trucks and during uh, seismic survey and several vibrosized trucks are used in a good condition uh, of land or rather flat area so now we'll take a look on uh, the animation that I took from uh, the YouTube so here credit to Luke Patrick illustration who make this a uh, very informative video so here is a model of vibrosized truck so actually almost similar to the actual one so at the center here 
it's placed the base plate that we uh, I need to reduce the volume so that you can hear my voice okay I hope you can hear my voice now so uh, here is uh, the base plate that uh, we are discussing just now uh, the blue color one so uh, it will lower the plate slowly to the ground uh, and lifting the truck uh, upward uh, like here then give a vibration with a sweep range of 1 hertz to 250 hertz so more advanced compared to the what we just discussed uh, just now so it is continuous vibration for a few seconds so here uh, this is how it transmitted the sound wave energy towards uh, downward throughout the subsurface so the signal will be bounced back to the surface and can capture about 4 km downwards uh, of the subsurface information here uh, where they plant the receiver and nowadays everything is wireless where is the signal antenna here and that letter will be sent to the seismic time arrival to high-end processing uh, computer so this is basically how the image of the subsurface looks like when we record the seismic signal so we can directly identify uh, certain geological information such as fault, uh, unconformity, horizon and signals uh, later, this seismic uh, model will be undergone forward modeling uh, to represent the real Earth subsurface like this. Here is some comparison between type of sources, advantages and disadvantages. First, we look into, I need to change it into the pointer laser. Laser pointer, I mean. So first, we look into the weight drop here. Uh, obviously it saves a lot of money compared to the other sometimes you only pay someone to do hammering and plant the geophone and so on rather than explosive with a tedious procedure with a lot of money involved as well as vibro size so all in all it is simple to operate and simple to maintain so the, the disadvantages are where we have difficulty to sustain the power of impact from one source to uh, point to another source point unless we are using a uh, load drop that we can maintain the height of the impact and the load so that the power will be more or less constant plus uh, due to a small amount of seismic energy produced it is difficult to record uh, available observation uh, at great distance hence produce low frequency in nature thus it will be highlighting a surface uh, wave rather than um, uh, body P wave so secondly is explosion so explosion will produce a good P wave energy uh, it will give you high uh, amplitude signal with a good frequency bandwidth and then uh, later will provide a finer data resolution in the seismic image however uh, similar to the wake drop the impact uh, sometimes is not similar is different varied at different point source so plus um, the mobilization is quite slow where we have to drill a borehole roughly um, third quarter meter from the surface to place the dynamite um, so uh, it's obvious, uh, obviously destructive and cannot carry out in a populous area vibratory always consider a good choice of seismic source because the signal is well defined repeatable and super fast on the the location of the source point are marked and accessible however it is little to no disturbance to surrounding land uh, creating a good and environmental type of source so the supreme advantage of this uh, vibratory is, is, uh, is it can produce a secondary wave as well uh, by moving its place uh, or moving its plates uh, from side to side so the disadvantages are the signal cannot be directly interpreted as long um, as the long variable signal is uh, resulted uh, hence it requires a professional computer processing uh, sequence to separate certain uh, event of uh, interest other than that it requires a hard uh, surface place and base plate and uh, to lift uh, the 10 tons of truck uh, so it's quite heavy so environments uh, like swampy area uh, not go good condition uh, not advisable to use uh, this kind of techniques lastly the truck is um, super expensive so this slide is about comparing the explosive with vibratory uh, in terms of power and energy duration to be last 
so obvi obviously the power of uh, explosive is higher than uh, vibratory uh, but it has a short duration uh, to be sustained through time so both produce a high energy wave uh, but explosive uh, provide a large range of frequency uh, however vibrator can tune a spectrum of certain frequency to be presented at the chosen length so this is very uh, significant especially if you want to study the um, uh, the thin layer so all in all uh, after discussing about the land type of sources we have to consider some ideal seismic source uh, for seismic exploration first we have to look into the safety efficient and environmental acceptable um, whether it is acceptable or not remember safety first then we have to consider the mobilization portability uh, of the source and what type is considerable so uh, don't do the survey at the peak hour uh, because it's noise it's noisy and so on uh, it will disturb uh, the surrounding area uh, certain case night survey is prohibited as we as we can disturb other people uh, night activities and at certain area is due to uh, safety purpose so we all need to look into a certain aspect uh, when to choose a proper type of source for instance uh, we cannot use uh, exploration in an uh, urban area as we can danger to the nearby people or makes them uh, panic so we have to look into um, uh, the project budget for the second point uh, whether it is economical or not so different case uh, sometimes just require a simple approach to achieve it for example shallow subsurface study for engineering purpose are not requiring uh, expensive type of source to carry out like vibrators and explosion enough with hammer and drop load um, since the target is not a uh, critical and shallow so this will contribute to point number three where we have to consider whether the energy is sufficient enough or not and then uh, the sustainability for the study so last but not least uh, we have to consider whether it is repeatable or not in order to produce the exact same waveform uh, at different source point so actually uh, there were several more things that need to be considered when it comes into ideality of seismic source but here are the major concerns that we should take note